Hey guys, what's going on? My name is Michael, you're watching IDB. In this video, I wanna show you my top 10 favorite features in iOS 18 that you can't miss. Let's go ahead and jump in right now. First up is for some security for your applications. So iOS 18 now allows you to hide and lock applications. So if I go to a page right here, let's say I want to lock Snapchat. If I press and hold on it, you can see we have an option here that says require face ID. If I click on this, I can click on require face ID or hide and require face ID. So if I hide the application, it is not gonna show up anywhere in my phone, including spotlight search, except the hidden folder. So I'll show you exactly how that works. I'll click on hide and require face ID. Then if I click on hide app, you can see Snapchat is no longer showing up in my phone. If I go ahead and search for Snapchat, it doesn't even show up as you can see. However, if I go into my app library, at the very bottom, you see we have hidden. If I click on this and then scan with Face ID, you can see Snapchat now shows up. If you wanna get this out of your hidden folder, all you have to do is press and hold and then click on don't require Face ID, scan your face, and then it'll show up again uh, when you search for it on your phone just like this. However, I think the way that most people are going to use this feature is simply locking the app but not hiding it. So if you press and hold, then click on require face ID, then just require face ID but not hide it. You can see it's still gonna show up on your home screen, but when you try to open the application, it's gonna require face ID or your passcode. Next up is for the lock screen. So iOS 18 brings a much requested feature, which is for these toggles on your lock screen. So these are actually customizable now. So how do we do this? Well, on our lock screen, if we press and hold, then click on customize, then press on our lock screen, you can see that these toggles are actually now clickable and we can change what these are. So say for example, I wanna change the camera shortcut. All I have to do is click on the minus button. Then I can click in this blank space and I can choose any toggle I want. So let's say I want a shortcut to my calculator. I can click on this right here, then click on done. Now, as you can see right on my lock screen, when I press and hold on this toggle, it's gonna to go ahead and open up the calculator instead of the camera. I think a lot of people are gonna to wanna to change this toggle because in iOS 18, you can still swipe to get to the camera. So it doesn't make any sense having a redundant camera toggle at the bottom right-hand corner. Also for me, I have the 15 Pro, so I can simply press and hold my action button, which I have set up for the camera. So I think a lot of people are gonna to wanna to change these toggles as they can access something a lot faster. Next up at number three is Control Center. So Control Center in iOS 18 has a big redesign. Now, to be honest with you, I don't really know how I feel about the redesign. I actually think I liked the look of the Control Center in iOS 17. However, Control Center in iOS 18 does have more functionality. So if you press and hold on an open space, you can see that we can actually change any of these toggles inside of Control Center. I can click on add a control and I can add any control right into Control Center just like this. You can also see that every single toggle has a grabber on the bottom right hand corner. So if I grab something, I can make it smaller and I can also make it bigger just like this. And then also if you fill up your control center, we also have the option to add a second page of toggles, which is awesome and something that we've never had before. So while I liked the design of control center in iOS 17 a lot better, it's definitely nice that you can finally reorder your control center and have the exact layout that you want. And I also like the option of being able to change the size of your toggles. And then I should also mention that iOS 18 control center has a few new buttons at the top. So if you wanna edit your control center, you can click on this plus icon. And then we also have a dedicated power button as well. So you no longer have to press and hold any buttons. If you wanna turn off your iPhone, the button is now right up here. Next up at number four is app icon customization. And this one is probably my favorite update in iOS 18. You can see here that all of my icons look a little bit different. And that is because iOS 18 now supports dark mode icons and even some more customization for the icons. So I like keeping my iPhone in dark mode and I like having my icons dark like this. I think it looks really, really sleek. I'll show you exactly how you can customize your icons. So if you press and hold in blank space, then click on the edit button on the top left hand corner, you'll see that we have a few different options. What you wanna press on is customize. And it's gonna bring you into an option here at the bottom of the screen that lets you change all of your icons. So the first thing is you can simply choose if you wanna have the labels turned on or off. And that is decided by the small or large option. So small is gonna have the labels on, and if you choose large, it's gonna turn off all of the labels for your apps, and it's gonna make your home screen look a little bit more clean. 
For me, I think these icons look a little bit too big, so I'm gonna keep it at small. But you can also see we have different options to change how our icons look. So we can have the classic light mode icons, we can have dark mode, we can also have automatic. So when your iPhone is in light mode, they'll be light. And when it's in dark mode, they'll be dark. And then we also have a really out of the blue feature, which I could not see Apple adding, but they did. And it is tinted icons. You can see here, all of our icons and widgets are now able to be tinted any color that you want. So if you want your icons to be neon green like this, you can actually do that. We also have a color picker. So if you wanna select a specific color from your wallpaper to really match it, you can do that. So if you have been dreaming of an iPhone that has brown icons and widgets, well, you can now have that with iOS 18. But for me, I really don't like the look of this. I think I'm gonna stick with my dark app icons. This is really, really nice. Apple has redesigned a lot of their apps to look a lot better in dark mode. And also, Apple is doing something really cool with third-party application icons. So developers are gonna have the option to add a dark mode icon for their application when iOS 18 comes out. However, Apple is actually doing something where it can make the icons dark for you, even if the developer hasn't updated their application. So you can see here my skip the dishes icon, you can see it has a black background and an orange logo. Also my WestJet app and my Credit Karma app. None of these have been updated for iOS 18's dark mode. You can see all of these icons actually have a dark mode now. So it's really nice that you're gonna get that continuity if you have the dark mode icons turned on. Cause if you have some icons that are dark and some that are light, it kind of ruins the experience. The next feature I wanna show you is for the calendar application. And there are two things inside of calendar that I love. So the first thing is you're now able to see your entire month and events within each day when you're looking at the month overview. Before in iOS 17, you would simply see the month and if you had an event on that day, you would simply see a single dot, which was horrible. For iPhones that are this big, you can see that the phone is definitely capable of showing what events are happening on each day. We can also zoom in, so if you wanna see more detail, we can zoom in and we can zoom out just like this. And as you do this, your phone is giving you nice haptic feedback. You can see that if you zoom out too far, it's not gonna show you exact event details, but it is gonna give you color coding based on which events are in each calendar. And then another really great feature inside of the calendar app is reminders integration. So if you click on add a new event, you can see here that we have an option at the top to change it to a reminder. So if I just call it something random and click on add, you can see that if I go to this day, it is actually in as a reminder instead of an event. So I think I'm never gonna use the reminders app ever again, simply because this kind of brings the two together. And then this is also backwards compatible. So if you have added any reminders inside of the reminders application, those will now show up inside of calendar and you can check them off right from inside the app just like that. Next up at number six is improvements inside of the messages application. The first thing is iOS 18 now supports RCS. As you can see here, I have a messaging thread with one of my colleagues and it says text message slash RCS, which is fantastic. So RCS is pretty much bringing rich communication uh, to people that don't have iPhones, which is fantastic. So you're gonna get a bunch of new features with RCS, such as red receipts, typing indicators, and much higher quality media. So I don't know why it took Apple so long to add RCS support to the iPhone, probably because they're trying to force people to use iMessage, but it's really nice that we now have support for RCS, so when you are texting your green bubble friends, the experience is going to be a lot better. And we also have a bunch of new features for iMessage itself. So the first one is text effects. So as you can see here, you're actually able to animate your text. As you can see on these two bubbles up here, uh, they can actually bounce and they can explode. Uh, it's kind of a fun way uh, to add a bit of life to your iMessages. And then another really cool feature in iMessage in iOS 18 is support for satellite messages. So if you are out of service, you're still gonna be able to send an iMessage or a text message using a satellite. So Apple has been expanding their satellite services a lot in the last few years. So it started out with emergency SOS via satellite, and they also allow you to send your location via satellite. And now Apple is allowing you to send iMessages and text messages over a satellite service. I assume Apple is eventually gonna start charging for this service, although we haven't heard word of that yet. But it's really nice that if you are out of service and out of internet, you can still send a message and uh, you can still reach your friends and family. 
iOS 18 also allows you to tap back a message with an emoji. You can see here, it also has redesigned the tap back menu, but if you swipe, you can choose any emoji to choose as a tap back. And then another really great feature in this update is you can schedule an iMessage. So let's say it's your friend's birthday in three days and you remembered today, but you're afraid you're gonna forget in three days. But you can actually schedule that text message. So if you click on plus, then scroll down, then click on send later, you can type out that message. And then here you can choose exactly when you wanna send that message. And then really quick, this isn't an iOS 18 feature. However, I figured I'd show you right now because a lot of you may not know you can do this. When you are inside of iMessage, if you click on this plus icon, you can actually change the order of this. So if you want the send later feature to be up here, all you have to do is press and hold on it and you can drag it up to the higher menu just like this. Next up at number seven is we have an all new application in iOS 18 called Passwords. So Passwords is no longer inside of settings finally, so it now is its own application. When you go ahead and open up Passwords, it's gonna require Face ID like this. And then as you can see, we have a bunch of different sections. So you can have all of your accounts. We also have pass keys. We have access codes, Wi-Fi, security, and deleted passwords. What's really cool about this application is you can actually create your own QR code for your Wi-Fi network. So I'll click on this and I'll show you exactly what that looks like. So here is the Wi-Fi network for my house. And if I click on show QR code, I'm actually able to create a QR code that I can show to people and they can scan that to connect to my Wi-Fi. Next up at number eight is something that Apple is calling math notes. So inside of the notes application, you're able to draw out math equations and the iPhone is gonna be able to solve it using AI and handwriting recognition. So here inside of notes, if you click on the handwriting button, it looks like a pen, I'll rotate my iPhone horizontally. If I draw out any equation, so let's just say five times five, now please excuse my horrible handwriting. As soon as I draw an equal sign, you can see we have something pop up. If I click on solve, you can see it's gonna input that answer. What's really cool is as you can see, it didn't input the answer in plain text. It actually tried to emulate my handwriting, which is really, really cool. So this is going to work with much more advanced math. It's not just multiplication, addition, subtraction. You can do some really advanced math in here and the iPhone is gonna be able to solve it instantly. And what's really cool on top of math notes is iOS 18 supports math everywhere in the system. So anywhere you can type, if you type out an equation, your iPhone is gonna prompt you and it's gonna be able to solve it. So if I type out a random number and then go times this number, as soon as I put an equal sign, you can see that the iPhone is gonna suggest an answer right there. I can click on it and it's gonna input the answer just like that. Next up is number nine. This one is kind of fun, it's kind of silly, and I don't know if Apple really needed to add this to iOS 18, but they did, and it is the flashlight. So when you turn on your flashlight, you can see you have a giant new UI pop out of the top of your iPhone, and you can change the width of your flashlight beam. So if you drag your finger in, you can make it more narrow. I don't know if it's gonna show up on camera, but here's what it looks like when it's narrow, and if I make it wider, you can see that's what it looks like when it's wider. I think it does show up a little bit on camera. But if you really wanna fine tune where your flashlight is aiming, this is now a new feature in iOS 18. You can also drag up and down to change the intensity of your flashlight uh, as you were able to before. Uh, this is one of those typical Apple features where it's over the top and the attention to detail is crazy. But if you wanna be able to customize the width of your flashlight, I guess you're now able to do it in iOS 18. So as I was making the script for this video, when I was putting in that flashlight one, it kind of inspired me to have a mini compilation of small features for number 10. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. Number 10 is all of the very small things. And the first small thing is something that is just so Apple, and it is the bezel on the iPhone actually reacts when you press the buttons. As you can see here, as I'm pressing the volume button, it looks like the bezel of my iPhone is moving. Now I'm actually gonna change to a lighter wallpaper so you can see it a little better. Here, so here is a lighter wallpaper and as you can see, as I press the volume buttons, the bezel is actually reacting and you can see it going in and out just like that. 
I actually think that this is more than just a UI change. This is actually hinting at Apple's new iPhone in the future, which is going to have capacitive buttons. So I think we're actually really close to a future where iPhones don't have clickable buttons. They're actually just capacitive. And we're gonna get that little animation on the side of the iPhone when you press it, instead of getting an actual click. But I guess now on my iPhone 15 Pro, I kind of get the best of both worlds. I get the actual button click and I also get the animation on the bezel. Another little thing is for the clock application. So when you start a stopwatch and then go to the home screen, your stopwatch is now gonna show up in the island, which is really convenient. Another really small feature is for widgets on the home screen. Just as you were able to edit your control center options and resize them, you can actually do that on the home screen as well with your widgets. You can see here that we have a grabber on all of our home screen widgets, and we can actually change the size of them without removing the widget. This is gonna make customizing your home screen a lot better. Another new small feature in iOS 18 is something called Music Haptics. You can see here inside of the music application, when you have it turned on, it's gonna show you that it's turned on right there. And essentially what this feature does is it vibrates your iPhone's haptic engine to the tune of whatever song you're playing. And because the haptic engines inside of iPhones these days are very, very precise, it's gonna feel really, really cool. So I have the volume turned all the way down on the song just for copyright issues. But as I'm holding my phone, the vibration I'm feeling is so unique. And I think when you have music playing at the same time as this, it's gonna make for a really cool experience if you're playing music and holding your iPhone in your hand. However, I do think that this is still just an accessibility feature. Inside of settings, it's here inside of accessibility. If you scroll down a bit, you'll see music haptics is right here. You can also get a little sample of it inside of settings as well. And you can also choose to turn it on inside of control center as well. And it does have its own widget. All right, this next one is definitely a little change. It's tiny, but I think you guys are going to like this. Inside of settings, your camera settings are accessible way faster. In iOS 17, you would have to do a ton of scrolling as soon as you opened up settings. But as soon as you open it up now, you can see that camera options are available as soon as you open up the application. I think Apple finally realized that people are changing their camera settings a lot more. So they added it to the front page of settings and it's a lot faster to access now. And then you're also gonna notice this theme across all of iOS 18 settings. You can see that the entire app itself has been reorganized and it's in fact a lot shorter now. So if you wanna change any setting for a specific application, everything is at the bottom and you can click on apps right here to make any specific changes. But the final little feature I wanna show you in iOS 18 is inside of battery. When you click on battery, you can then click on charging and you can see we now have a charging limit. So you can choose any limit in 5% increments between 80 and 100%. So if you are someone who really wants to preserve the battery health of your iPhone, you can choose to bring your charging limit all the way down to 80%. This would be a good idea if you rarely have your iPhone around 10 or 20%. I guess it wouldn't really matter then if your iPhone never gets fully charged. And if you never fully charge your iPhone, it is gonna be better for the longevity of your battery. So if you're someone who doesn't use your iPhone that much, I'd consider using this. However, for me, I'm someone who uses their iPhone quite a bit, so I'm gonna keep this at 100%. So those are my top 10 features in iOS 18. I hope you guys enjoyed this longer video. If you guys found this video informative, helpful, entertaining, anything, please drop a like on the video and also comment down below telling me what you thought. With all that said, my name is Michael with IDB. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.